Now our next speaker is a true activist, has been to Wall Street, was the first female arrested for the cause of justice for each and every one of us. Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you Kat Sluka. Show me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Show me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. All right. Uh, I am so excited to be here today. I came from Muskegon on the west side. This is incredible. Can y'all hear me good? Yeah. Okay, awesome. So I'll start out with my experience on Wall Street. I arrived on September 17th. I was there for the March Around the Bull. I was there for the standoff at 55th Street. Um, I was there for the first GA when we took Liberty Plaza. so hopefully it will not go as rough in these movements. I was first arrested on September 19th during the first march down Wall Street. I was arrested during other people's arrests when I called for officer's badge numbers. Now I made a mistake of locking eyes with a lieutenant and they don't like it when you look them in the eye and they called for my arrest. I was never read my rights I was never told why I was being detained, and I was illegally searched. And I screamed all of this at the top of my lungs. You can YouTube it. <laughs> I was detained for an hour and a half. Luckily, I had five of my brothers in a cell next to me, which helped keep my spirits up. But during that first arrest, I could not help but imagine what it would be like to be detained indefinitely in a system where I did not speak the language or I did not have rights to a lawyer. I'm a, pris I'm a prisoner's rights advocate, so I could not help but imagine what it would be like to sit in a cell indefinitely for the rest of my life. My second arrest occurred on September 24th, during when we took Broadway. Once again, there was an arrest one of my sisters was taken. By this time, I had been pegged as an organizer and as a strong female voice that must be eradicated. The officers knew who I was, and they were out to get me. When I was calling for badge numbers, Officer Louis Pachenko shoved me with his forearms, and I said, don't touch me. He said, don't touch you? Oh, I'll touch you and he proceeded to touch me for the rest of the day until I was out of his custody. I was sexually assaulted. There was a photograph of my breast being grabbed by two officers. I was covered in bruises. I was shoved up against a wall, and I was detained for over 30 hours. I was taken to Bellevue, which is a mental hospital, against my will. I was treated like a piece of transportable commodity. I had three officers for little old me. They thought they got someone real big. So, I was harassed by correction officers. I faced racism and violence within the cell. I did not handle this well, this arrest. I'm a survivor of domestic violence and it brought it all back. So I do urge you to keep in mind, if you are, when you choose your level of involvement, at what exactly you are getting into, because it can be terrifying. I was released on September 25th, around 7 p.m. My brothers and sisters were waiting for me in the courtroom. I have an amazing lawyer, so I had support. But it did not go without taking a toll on my, my human spirit. That was only about 35 hours of my stay on Wall Street, the first nine days. The rest of the time, I was elated. I was ecstatic. I had never experienced anything close to that much human spirit and potential for change. 
Every day we marched, we organized, we spoke, we demonstrated, and we loved and healed each other. We came from all walks of life, from every corner of the country and even the world. It was incredible. It was the largest feeling of solidarity I could ever imagine. And I am ecstatic to share this with people in Michigan. When I was on Wall Street, every chance I got, every reporter, anytime I could, I said I am from Muskegon, Michigan, a city that had the highest unemployment in the country a few years back. And I will represent that city until my last breath, just like we will represent this state. Because Michigan knows hard times. When you leave this state and you speak to people in the rest of the country and you say, I am from Michigan, their ears perk up. They know that we know hard times. This is a state that capitalism has abandoned. And this is a time where the people need to come together and demand a change. Woo! Yeah. No longer will we stand to be walked all over. We are not going to tolerate this anymore. We are an amazing state. We are the Great Lakes state. We are a backbone of America, and we must speak out. We have a tremendous role. Woo! So, thank you. This is incredible. Thank you. I, <laughs> thank you. I am so excited. I hope all of you feel this infectious disease that is occupation. Yeah. <laughs> because this is just the beginning. We are rallying. We are marching. We are demonstrating. We are doing what our foremothers and fathers have paved the way for us to do. And we are not going to be stopped. We are turning off the computer and the TV, and we are assembling. And this is what democracy looks like. Hell yeah! yeah.